it does give me a chance uh, to lead into my talk. I'm going to show a little uh, video in a minute, but um, this is the Ventmon, which was made by Public Invention. That's what you're seeing on the desk there. In the video that I'm going to show of Vent OS, it's using the same uh, software system, which he calls Vent Display. And this harkens back to something that Lee was talking about. Um, what we're trying to do is to make modular pieces that can be reused by anybody. Um, so there are two vent mods being used by uh, a, a team in India right now, and there are other vent mods in different parts of the world which are being used for this purpose, not clinical purposes, but to test these, um, uh, these, these experimental um, ventilators. And eventually, my hope is that the vent mod will become a... Um, uh, it will become a um, clinical tool. So um, let me now uh, share my screen and show the Vent OS software. We seem to be right on time. In 10 minutes, the oxygen concentrator uh, session is going to begin, which should be a lot of fun. Uh, we, we have a, a lot of very interesting people speaking there. I always forget to click the sound button when I share this. Forgive me. Okay. Uh, okay, this is a short video I made about Hello, everybody. Vent I'm Robert L. Reed, demonstrating the latest version of Vent OS um, in combination with some other software pieces, which should allow us to demonstrate it, in particular, the Vent display. This is the same user interface, interface that Nathaniel was just showing. It's a piece of software, which is separate. universal platform for respiratory support devices, such as mechanical ventilators, uh, BPAP or BiPAP machines, and CPAP machines, and possibly even PAPers. What you're seeing here is the vent display, which is rendering a pressure and flow waveform, which is broken up into breaths um, by a thresholding algorithm that we have, producing a display similar to what you might see on a mechanical ventilator. This is, in fact, running in a web page um, using some data transmission standards, which are developed by Public Invention, called the Public Invention Respiratory Data Standard, which captures all of this information. Vent OS is not running on a computer, but is running on a microcontroller. In this case, it's an ESP32, which is attached through the serial port on my desktop. Uh, so what you're seeing is the output of a tiny computer, a microcontroller, as one would embed it inside a uh, electronic ventilator. What we've done here is modify the vent display software to allow certain controls uh, of the simulated ventilator to be controlled. And so I'm going to send those to the machine right now. Let me pause this for just a second. I realize I didn't introduce this very well. Vent OS originally stood for ventilation operating system. It's not really an operating system, but it is meant to be a platform that runs on a microcontroller, which can drive any number of ventilation architectures. So the idea is that the Vent OS software will eventually drive the Polyvent machine. And in theory, it could drive Darren Lewis's Open Vent Bristol machine as well. Um, we're a little bit away from that. Vent OS is, is, by the way, not a project of uh, public invention. It's a project of helpful engineering, but I, um, I work on it uh, a lot. So the idea here is this Vent OS is standardized software, which is designed to be used with drivers to be reused on different hardware. So that instead of having 20 teams developing their own software for their ventilators, we could have one team develop a highly tested core a very reliable software for these ventilators. Um, and then of course, each machine would require a driver for the specific motors and valves and, and so forth that it uses. Which should produce a change in the behavior that we'll be able to see up in these 
waveforms. Okay, and as you can see, the pressure has increased to approximately 35. It's got some simulated noise in there. That's why it's not exactly 35 um, centimeters of water. And the flow has changed as well to reach a tidal volume, uh, a default tidal volume in this case, of 350 milliliters. Um, of course, it changes a little bit as each breath goes through there. Now I'm going to increase the um, tidal volume to 800, which would be a very, very high uh, tidal volume. That's for a large adult male. And um, in doing that, the flow had to increase in order to get the um, uh, total volume to equal 800 milliliters in the relatively short time that we have. Now we can change the um, exhalation to inhalation ratio to something closer to one down here with these controls and send that to the simulation. And that will make the waveform a little bit uh, uh, more even. You can see here the pressure wave now has the same inhalation period where pressure is being applied to the exhalation period which drops to the so-called peak pressure of five centimeters of water, uh, although it goes all the way up to 35 at the inspiration time. So let us suppose that we needed to increase the inspiration pressure just a little bit. I can do that and we'll be able to see it come out here. Now the pressure has increased just a little bit and I can, for example, increase the respiratory rate which will make it go faster, but will make each breath necessarily be shorter. You can see the inhalation time has gotten shorter. Now, this would be much more impressive if it were using an actual hardware machine that was actually blowing air into a test lump. That is, in fact, the purpose of VentOS, but right now we're doing this in simulation. We're doing it with drivers, which uh, presumably all we have to do is obtain hardware, write the proper drivers, and we'll be able to obtain something very similar to this effect uh, with the VentOS. So this is a prelude to us using this on real machines. Thank you for your attention. Okay, um, thank you. I see a question. Nice projects and very technical too. Um, so next up is uh, 